This is the day the Lord has made. We will we rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. And today, we celebrate Mother's Day. We give thanks to God for all who tend and teach children, especially moms. So happy Mother's Day to all of you out there. And just let us rejoice. Let us see in our relationship with one another and the nurture and care of one another how God is present. How God is present. Now go ahead. Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. Believing in him, we have grace to love one another as you command and share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Our gathering hymn is Rise Up, O Saints of God. Thank you. 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Our trust and our hope are secure through the relationship that God has with us, relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Though we are apart, we keep the faith by confessing together I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Today's first reading is an account of the first Christian martyr, Stephen, being allowed to look directly into heaven. His life was being taken from him. Yet God had not condemned nor forsaken him, but gave him grace for those killing him. The reading is from 7th chapter of Acts, beginning with verse 55. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed steadily upon it, upward into heaven, and saw the glory of God. And he saw Jesus standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. And he told them, Look, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. Then they put their hands over their ears, and drowning out his voice with their shouts, they rushed at him. They dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. The official witnesses took off their coats and laid them at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they stoned him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he fell to his knees, said, shouting, Lord, don't charge them with this sin. And with that, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in today's uh, reading of the psalm, responsive reading. O Lord, I have come to you for protection. Do not let me be put to shame. Rescue me, for you are always do what is right. Bend down and listen to me. Rescue me quickly. Be for me a solid rock of safety, a fortress where my enemies cannot reach. You are my rock and my fortress. Your love and your name. Lead me out of this peril. Pull me up from the trap my enemies set for me, for I find protection in you alone. And trust my spirit into your hand. Yes, you, Lord, for you are a faithful God. My future is in your hands. Rescue me from those who hunt me down relentlessly. Let your favor shine on your servant. In your unfailing love, save me. The second lesson proclaims Christ as a cornerstone chosen for us by God. In every time of uncertainty, because human systems will fail us, God has provided his own son to be the cornerstone for believers to align their lives with. The reading comes from the second chapter of 1 Peter, beginning with the second verse. You must crave pure spiritual milk so that you can grow into the fullness of your salvation. Cry out for this nourishment as a baby cries for milk, now that you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness. Come to Christ, who is the living cornerstone of God's temple. He was rejected by the people, but he is precious to God, who chose him. And now God is building you as living stones into this, his spiritual temple. What's more, you are God's holy priest, who offer the spiritual sacrifices that please him because of Jesus Christ, as the scriptures express it. I am placing a stone in Jerusalem, a chosen cornerstone, and anyone who believes in him will never be disappointed. Yes, he is very precious to you who believe, 
But for those who reject him, the stone that was rejected by the builders has now become the cornerstone. And the scriptures also say, He is a stone that makes people stumble, the rock that will make them fall. They stumble because they do not listen to God's word or obey it, and so they meet the fate that has been planned for them. But you are not like that, for you are a chosen people. You are a kingdom of priests, God's holy nation, his very own possession. This is so you can show others the goodness of God. For he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, now you are the people of God. Once you received none of God's mercy, now you received his mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. It's time for the children's sermon. And today, I want you to think about what is your favorite place to be? Where is it that you've been spending a lot of time that you feel safe and comfortable? Now I want you to think about another place. Where would be another place, maybe someone else's house, where you also feel safe and comfortable, somewhere that you want to go to? What makes that a special place for you? These are things to ponder throughout the day and throughout the week. What makes this a special place? In the gospel reading that I'm about to share, Jesus says, in my Father's house are many rooms. And if I go to prepare a place for you there, he's promising to do that for them, he will come and bring them to his father's house. So that apparently is very important for Jesus, very special for Jesus, his father's house. So as we think about grandparents' homes, aunts and uncles' homes, and special things there, know that God has for you a special place for all eternity. Will you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the home we live in. Help us to make it special for everyone who lives here. Thank you, Lord, that you are always with us, that your presence, your promise, means wherever I am, there you are also. You are with me, Lord. And forever may I give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let us sing our gospel acclamation. Verses 1 and 2 of You Are the Way. <laughs> us to care for one another, to make our homes a special and even sacred place, and to share with others in the rich abundance of what God provides for us, and to seek to be in relationship 
not just for what I can do, but for the ways that God may be blessing me through others, even if I have to ask for a cup of sugar or something that I need. Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. On the evening in which Jesus was betrayed, in the upper room with the disciples, which were 40 or more, I said that as I was practicing, and Barbara said, 40? Yeah, we should not think it's just the 12. Where were the women who went to the tomb on Easter morning? Oh, well, there were more than the 12. And you might realize, as we feel in the background, there were others beyond the 12 who were in the background were doing God's work, supporting the ministry of Jesus and bearing his light to others. Well, on that occasion in the upper room, Jesus said to those gathered, do not be troubled. Trust God now. Trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's home, and I am going to prepare a place for you. If this were not so, would I tell you plainly? When everything is ready, I will come and get you that, so that you will always be where I am, and you know the way where I'm going and how to get there. No, we don't know the way, Lord, Thomas said. We haven't any idea where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had known who I am, then you would have known who my Father is. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. Jesus replied, Philip, don't you even yet know who I am? Even after all this time I have been with you, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking to see him? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say are not my own, but the Father who lives in me does his work through me. Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe because of what you have seen me do. The truth is, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I'm going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name and I will do it because the work of the Son brings glory to the Father. Yes, ask anything in my name and I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. This passage, John 14, particularly the first seven verses, are a favorite for funerals. I want you to ponder why that is. Why would these verses, this promise of Jesus, that there is for them, there is for you a place in his father's house. Why would that be special at funerals? An important message. Funerals are unwelcome events, yet special moments in our life's journey with family and friends and neighbors even. We express our sympathies in person at visitations. We celebrate the lives of loved ones along with God's mercy and faithfulness in the funeral service. And at the graveside, we trust our loved ones to God's glory and eternal Care. John 14 is a meaningful funeral reading on account of Jesus' promise of a place in heaven for all who believe. So why include in that telling and sharing that promise these questions, Philip and Thomas's questions, almost objections to Jesus? Don't we just believe and apply to our lives everything that Jesus says? Or maybe sometimes we need to get some of the clutter out of the way 
that our understanding might be clear. When my mother passed, my brother and my sisters and I arranged for a visitation for her. She lived in Oregon when my parents retired. They moved to Oregon and lived with my middle sister there. They were within walking distance of their church. And my mother, when we would visit in person, we would worship with them. We learned about that church and we met some of their friends and in her letters and over the phone, mother would tell us about her Christ Care small group, how meaningful that was for her and the other ministries like digging wells in Africa that the church was engaged in. So at the visitation, we expected to meet some of those fellow believers, part of her church family, and hear from them stories of her mother and celebrate with them at that time of visitation her life. But nobody showed up. The funeral home had helped us to arrange for a visitation at the chapel at the cemetery. I guess we should have gotten a clue when they didn't have visitations at their own facility. The funeral service itself, that was well attended. And it was on par with the wonderful worship services that congregation is known for. Now I compare this with what I observed in Northern Illinois when I served there. There, more people would attend the visitation and the funeral service might be sparsely attended. Now these are general observations. For some families, both visitation and funeral gather many of the faithful, and that certainly is the way it is here in the heartland. None of us like to think about death nor face our own dying. I believe that's why people on the West Coast don't participate in visitations. And perhaps for others, funerals make death and dying and an eternal relationship with God just a little too real. Don't want to think about that. Don't want to consider the implications of how I live now in relation to that eternal life. Yet I believe the Lord delights, delights in our trusting his promise that he never abandons nor forsakes us. We've been taught to look towards the cross, to look towards the cross and see in that the way that Jesus has made for us to eternal life, a bridge for us between this life and the next through the forgiveness of sins. That's why Jesus suffered on the cross, was for the forgiveness of our sins, clearing that away, that that path should be a wide open pathway for all who believe and trust in Jesus. What Jesus has given us and the apostle John passes on to us is more a vision than a way than a path. It's a vision of relationship. Because they have relationship with Jesus, they have a place in his father's house forever. Jesus clearly says that. He says, I will come and get you that you may be where I am also. What a relationship to have with Jesus. Because you have a present day relationship with Jesus, you also have a life beyond this present one place in heaven's glory. Thomas and Philip, their confusion is that Jesus is not giving them a geographic path to follow. Everyone comes to the Father through knowing the Son, Jesus said. And they already knew and they believed in Jesus. And I believe that's why Jesus began to go back to the beginning of this passage. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. Now each of us have come to believe through the testimony of the Scripture with the help of the Holy Spirit illuminating, enlightening God's Word that it might be understandable and applicable to our lives. We've also come to believe through the testimony of the generations. 
those who we have known who believe. Set an example and help us to see it is possible for us to receive these gifts that, that Jesus our Lord promises. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life which will see us through this time of pandemic. Let us draw near to our Heavenly Father through Jesus in knowing him and know that in our faith, through our faith, we have a place in the glories of heaven. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you sent Jesus to live and die in flesh like ours. Give us patience to believe he rose from the grave and lives to guide us in the same powerful love by which you gave him victory over sin and death. May we seek his presence wherever life takes us and live in the hope and protection of his love, grounded in the peace he alone can give. Give us strength to serve others with words and deeds of kindness and compassion, following that example where Jesus led. Amen. Amen. And now let us finish singing that song. You are the way. and they celebrate the gift that God has given us. At your baptism, you were marked with the sign of the cross, a sign of the forgiveness of sins. The one who was crucified is risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. He's given us that new life. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. So let us give thanks always for the gift of baptism. We give thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. And you did not know the way and sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us through Jesus' wounded side and on our way, you shower us again with the waters of life. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love, O Lord. Satisfy your thirst with your peace, and give us life that you can give. The one who was crucified for the sin of humanity rose from the dead. Hear the good news. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. Therefore, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. To God our Father be given all honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Some time ago, this caught my attention. I wondered if it was what I thought it was, and, and it's been confirmed. And this one even has a bit of fabric on it. Way back when, early in the 19th century, from the heartland, women of the church would, would roll bandages, strips of cloth, washed, or fabric cut into cloth strips, 
and rolled up, to be sent to where the battle was, to be sent where the healing, the treatment for the wounds inflicted, that from here we could send something that would be useful in that time of need. And right now we keep in our hearts and our minds and God, God places that there for us. The needs of those who in their homes or in the hospital, in recovery, particularly those in care centers, are in need of knowing that others care for them and love them. So part of the legacy of bringing our offering is to see that the word of God, the love of God goes out to all the world as it is nurtured through our church, through our church community for us and for our families. So I encourage you to continue to, to send your offering for the work of the church and let us be imagining God lead us to ways that we might serve as a church, those in need, those who are lonely. Let us pray. God of glory, receive our gifts and the offering of our lives as Jesus was lifted up from the earth. Draw us to your heart in the midst of this world. Bring all creation from bondage to freedom, from darkness to light, from death to life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And now the prayers of the people. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join with the people of God in every time and place, praying for the church, praying for the world, and all who are in need. Build us up, O Lord, your church of living stones, united in love as a spiritual house. Continue to strengthen your church as each member is sent forth to proclaim your love. We pray especially for cohesion in this time of physical separation. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Promising God, you fill our hearts and our lives with hope which can be visibly seen in the trees filling out with leaves the sprouting seeds in the fields, each reaching for the sun. We thank you for this joy, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Align our ways with your love, Almighty God. We pray for all the peoples of the world that living faith and power and compassion, your people will proclaim love and mercy over greed and neglect. That is love and mercy in place of need, greed, or neglect. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. What disruption this plague has brought to people's lives. You give us skills and wisdom and strength to apply to vocation. And now so many are out of work. Lord, may you provide for them connection, income, and a vision to see us through this time. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of healing and rest, be the strength of those whose hearts are heavy and weighed down by many troubles. Ease distress and hope. Ease distress with hope and provide friends to help with the burdens. Draw all near to you, especially those who are upon our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Nurturing God, we pray with thanksgiving for those who tend and teach young children. You have blessed mothers with a vital role in your plan for reproduction and families. You help them to give dignity and protection, gratitude for life, and a unique identity. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Generous God, 
you are faithful in your promises of life beyond death. You call into brilliant life all who have died. Keep us in faith, which captures the life you give now and bring us to the fullness of your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. United in faith, we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We think of this as a sending blessing, but I'm not sending you anywhere. You are already at your destination. So we close our worship with these words. May the one who brought forth Jesus Christ from the grave raise you to new life, fill you with all hope, and turn your mourning to dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and yours now and forever. Amen. So, you know your circumstances, and I pray that you, and I'm thankful for uh, communication with neighbors and friends and, and family. Live each day as a gift, making memories that reveal God's presence with us, the goodness rather than the despair. The email list is, is growing. If you'd like this sent directly to, to someone who is not receiving it and you're not passing it along yourself, please let us know and we can include them in our email list. Uh, I do produce DVDs that I uh, deliver to those who do not have electronic means of receiving the service um, and even have some who um, the, the DVD would not be of any use, so we're mailing out to those who are home. So we want to be sure that everyone, even beyond our congregation, who, who need to hear a word of hope and encouragement, uh, we would be glad to send this, send this service to them. I lift up Hope for Iowa. Uh, continue that. It is a crisis call line. Um, if you haven't felt like you were out on a limb at some point in the last two months, uh, you're very blessed. Um, but if that seems to be, you know, teetering and, and blowing in the wind, perhaps it, it'd be good to speak with someone, not necessarily calling the crisis line, but, but reach out to someone who's an anchor and a support and a good guide for you, a good guide for you. Uh, but there is that crisis line. And the suicide prevention line listed there on that slide also. And I do welcome your calls. Uh, and even if it's concern for others. Um, and honestly, I'll say it, that, that we feel a little bit guilty, but I'm grateful for Penny and Carol and Barbara, uh, that we get to worship here in the sanctuary for you, for you. Uh, but may it be a blessing that, that this is brought to you. I thank them for their, their help with this, and uh, we will be letting you know what plans are coming up? What plans are coming up? But now, let us sing a sending song, one that is very familiar, How Great Thou Art. <laughs> Oh, 